You're listening to The Sizzle on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. All right, Jay, so let's get ready to talk about the preview Bears Lions week four. This is no. for none of the marbles. This is for no. all the kibbles and no bits. This is no. two animals in the wild who are doing things that have never been done before. <laughs> These are two dead animals in the wild who <laughs> can't find each other. This is the most inept pairing in the NFL right now. These are probably, well, we know one team is the worst team and it's not the team that has no wins. So we know one team is the worst team in the NFL and the second team is going to be doggone close. So it's going to be two teams that's going to make a really good football game. This is going to be a good football game. This is going to be worth watching. Because you got desperation at the highest levels right now. You got people's jobs online. The Chicago Bears brought in some extra quarterbacks to work out. Three people who I've never heard of came in and threw football today. So you got a question, is Justin Fields hurt more than they said? Mm -hmm. Is that a situation? Is that throwing hand after he got bushwhacked? 15 different times. Is it a problem now? Is he hurt? Now, is Andy Dalton still hurt? And Nick Foles, the $20 million kid, remember what the $6 million man was? That was a, that was a boatload of money. Mm-hmm. And now you got, they built a whole man for $6 million, gave him new legs and an arm and everything and a biotic eye. And you got a guy sitting up here with $20 million and don't want to play quarterback in the NFL. I wouldn't want to play behind this offensive line either. So I don't I don't blame Nick Foles for this at all. But uh, this is going to be incredibly crazy. Well, it's, it, what's really funny, and I think the thing that really gets at the core of this is you talk about development. And you that's why Matt Nagy was brought into the Bears as a development. He was sold as the offensive guru. The developer. Yeah, why didn't they leave him with the Chiefs? Why why didn't they leave him over there with the Chiefs? The young Patrick Mahomes after he worked with him for one year. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, as it looks, it's funny with the Chiefs. You know, if Andy Reid keeps getting sick, you might have the new head coaches, Eric Bieniemy. But that that's a whole different issue. But you're right. Oh, and then to wow. your point, you know, somebody said earlier, maybe it's a melanated quarterback thing. I said I could go along with that except for the fact that you had the precursor to Justin Fields. And that was <sighs> Twitchy Mitchy. Hey, I you told had you the precursor told you, to this. I told you Twitchy Mitchy was not that bad of a quarterback. Mm-hmm. Matt Nagy is just that bad of a coach. Yeah. And this is look, all Justin Fields is a better athletic version of Mitchell Trubisky. That's what he is, and he should be able to. He's had more college experience than Mitchell Trubisky, more big time game experience than Mitchell Trubisky, but the same type of quarterback. You saw Matt Nagy would not change his offensive philosophy for Mitchell Trubisky. What makes us think, because he's, as you like to call him, melanated, and some people out here probably think of uh, melon, or if they're going another way, watermelon, that could have other connotations, that uh, they start thinking that uh, he can't coach this type of quarterback. I think that's why they got him out of there with Patrick Mahomes after one year. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's an amazing, when you really look at it, the dichotomy of it is amazing. Now, the sad part is that when you look at Justin Fields, he is the most decorated offensive player he might be the most decorated bear at this moment i can't think unless jay you can come up with somebody i don't know of any bear that's playing right now for the chicago bears that's had a better collegiate experience that's had a better pedigree this kid was years ago he was taking in cam newton said he was great michael vick said he was great Everybody that went around him, Warren Moon, you had guys who were saying, 
This kid's going to be special. And right now, as you look at it, I don't see a plan in play because I don't think that Matt Nagy knows what to do. But with that so, said, what? No, okay. So let's think this through a little bit. All okay. right. Justin Fields has all the accolades and everything, and, and, and by right, he should, right? Mm -hmm. But we also saw that he didn't stick in Georgia, and he had to go to Ohio State, if I'm correct. Am I right about that? That's right. Okay. So there was something about his play in Georgia that Georgia did not cotton to. <laughs> see, I'm throwing all these uh, double entendres in there. I see. Uh <laughs> That for whatever reason he left Georgia because he was not able to showcase his talents there in the way that he thought that he should have been able to showcase his talents. Mm -hmm. Went on Ohio State, and we know what happened there. Now, quarterbacking in the NFL, is that a step up? Yes, it is. All right. A huge step up. Even bad play calling. All right. Horrible play calling. Is there not a check down system with this? A a check with me system? Can we not come to the line and check out of a bad play? Well, obviously uh, we can't because that's what Mitchell Trubisky was complaining about when he was in the offense. That he didn't have the check downs to be able to come out of a play if you read it and saw you like, oh no, this ain't gonna work. Oh no, that's not gonna work. But to your point, Jay, we did see. Justin Fields check into a play. Now that almost got him killed. Right now, let's go back to game one. Mm -hmm. All right, who was looking very good in this offense? <laughs> Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. Mm -hmm. The offense was on the move with Andy Dalton at the helm. Mm -hmm. We got the same coach, same offensive line. Mm -hmm. The only factor that changed was the quarterback. Mm -hmm. Now, when Justin Field came into the game, right, he had some very spectacular throws. But he also missed some wide open throws mm -hmm. when he came in, right? So let's ask the question, right? Is Matt Nagy this terrible of a coach or did the Bears see something that Georgia saw? Because I don't care what's going on, all right? At some point in time, you got to be able to throw the football to somebody. Mm -hmm. There's no way you're supposed to only throw. I mean, okay, so think about it. What, what was that, the, the game when he came in after um, Dalton was hurt? I think he was three for six, three for eight or something like that for like 40-some-odd yards or something, 50. Was it mm -hmm. more than that? I can't remember. Was it more no, than that, Greg? It was more than that. No. It was something. It was. You know, I, I don't think he came in and threw for 120 or something like that. I don't no. think he did. Maybe I'm wrong. No. Maybe I'm thinking whatever. Mm -hmm. So we saw two NFL uh, expense uh, pieces of this kid in the game and we didn't see production out of an offense that we saw production in there with Andy Dalton. Now, does Andy Dalton know the offense better than Justin Fields? Maybe he wasn't making the reads quick enough. I know he only had like 1.7 seconds, 1.4 seconds to get rid of the football, but we did see earlier on, I want to say that was in the preseason, where he got slobber knockered, mm -hmm. helmet went flying off. You know, when you get your headband knocked off, it's a problem. When, when your headband come off, it's a real problem. It's like getting one of your extensions get knocked out your head. You got hit. And why did he get hit? because he didn't slide the protection over there. That's probably one of the reasons why he did not beat Andy Dalton out to be the starter. That might be one of the reasons why Matt Nagy's right now saying any of the three quarterbacks could be starting right now. He's probably about rolling uh, Nick Foles out there. Mm -hmm. 
I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Possibility. Is this, is this all on Matt Nagy? Or is this a precursor to what we're going to see with Justin Fields that maybe he's not ready and maybe he's not going to be? Well, I know he's not ready, but we still have to look at the time where we have the issue is what he did while he was at Ohio State. You even saw what he did playing in a national title game under duress. So, okay, let's say in Georgia, just because he was behind Jake Fromm and they weren't giving him the opportunity because Fromm was the incumbent. So he said, okay, I'm out. But you saw at Ohio State against top-notch competition, the rookies that are in the league, the second-year guys, these are guys he played against. And you saw him being one of the best quarterbacks in college football. Just as good as Trevor Lawrence. Just as good as anybody else that you have David taken. Different on that one. Well, Justin Lawrence. He, uh, Trevor he, Lawrence he, is getting he ain't killed just, too. He ain't, he ain't just, but he's, he's not a pure passer like Trevor Lawrence is. I get it. I get it. But... Trevor Lawrence can't do what Justin Fields can do. And that is Absolutely. turn the corner and escape. So even it balances out. Yes, Trevor Lawrence is a pure passer, but he will stand there and get tattooed because he can't go anywhere. Now, when you get a breakdown with Justin Fields, something goes awry, at least you know you can pick up a first down because this kid can at least scramble out. We saw Baker Mayfield do it to him all game. That when things went bad, Baker Mayfield just said, okay, let me scramble out. Let me get around this. And, oh, there I am. Yeah, first down. Take it. Love it. But this was historically bad. Right. Uh, right. Mitchell Trubisky never looked like this. And he's not the athlete that Justin Fields is. Right. Now, he's a, he's a very good athlete, better than a lot of quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. This new breed of quarterbacks, we see the, the, the Allens of the league, the Justin Herberts of the league. We see guys out here who can run, the big boys who can throw the football. But we did not see something like this. This was historically bad. I mean, bad to the point where you looked at it and go, wait a minute, aren't you the quarterback? You mean to tell me, you mean to tell me, beyond getting sacked nine times, I'm not, I'm not say all of those sacks weren't his fault. You mean to tell me we're still only throwing for 68 yards in an entire football game? Well, Is, my question would be then, when as an offensive guru, you're the head coach, you are the offensive coordinator. When do you say, hmm, this isn't working? Whatever the game plan we had, that first half showed you this isn't working. So we've got to do some other things. But it wasn't just him passing. It was rushing. It was that the tight ends didn't touch the ball. There were a lot of things that went into this that, granted, I'll give you, Justin Fields was not good. He wasn't. But it was a lot more that was happening around Justin Fields. And, Jay, you know better than anybody else. If a left tackle cannot hold, he can't hold that in and he can't hold. <laughs> God. It was like, I thought I was out on the field for a minute. I looked up and I was watching the screen and I said, wow, I didn't realize I was playing. Then I said, I'm not playing. That is the starting left tackle for the Chicago Bears. And we look like we're about in the same shape right now. This yeah. is horrific. And this is what this young man, I mean, there were times you saw there were three or four Browns draped over him at, at one time. I, I just, I don't see how it's conducive that you can even say he was able to get off. Now, with that said, there have been the other games, the other two games before that. When you look back at the stats and you say, mm, he had not even cracked 100 yards yet. Preseason. Not close. You looked and you were like, I don't know. Oh, and another thing, Jay, maybe I'm crazy, but does he like Allen Robinson? Or does Allen Robinson not Appar like apparently him? Apparently not. You, you saw what Allen Robinson's agent tweeted, right? After that first game, that debacle. 
16 more left. That was it. 16 more left with an ellipsis behind. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm about this bad mofo. I'm out of here. I'm going somewhere. Tom, how you doing? You need one more? A Antonio Brown, you want to kick him out? You know what I'm saying? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just live in the garage. I got a quick come question down for you, you, though. Is sure. this the time that you think about moving an Allen Robinson to see if Absolutely he has not. some value? Absolutely not, because you're, you're, you're not going to get anything for him right now because it's a desperation move. And if you do that, you're saying you're a bailing on the entire season. And so now you're bailing on your fan base. And Matt Nagy's job hangs on this win coming up this week. Does if he it, cannot. Does yes, it really? I think so. I think so. You yeah, think, I think it so. really I, does? I think so. Because this now it's become a national problem. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mama McCaskey know what's going on, and she's what ninety something, right? Ninety one. I don't even Mama know if McCas she even knows who the people are on the oh, team. Oh, I, I, I think I think she's still sort of sharp. I think she still understands. But when she's watching her um her whatever her morning shows are, mm -hmm. it's coming up. The Chicago Bears are absolutely terrible, mm -hmm. and at some point in time, they're going to look up and go, well, "Who do we hire? Matt? Who? Aggie? Wacky?" You know what I'm saying? He was supposed to be who? There's a reason why the chefs cut him loose. You know what I'm saying? There's a reason why. Well, I go and back to the thing roll. that is not just Ryan Pace. This still goes back to who's over everyone. And that's your team president. And no, Absolutely. I don't mean one of those McCaskies. I mean Ted Phillips as your operations manager and your head of football. The man who knows nothing about football and has been around football for 30 years and still has learned nothing. So that means he doesn't want to learn. If he only wants to do economics, then you put him over there with the finance people. But when it comes to football things, this is – Ryan Pace is a – he's a scout. He's a really good defensive scout. Now, he sucks on offense. But he's yeah. really – he should go back to what they found him doing being a good defensive scout. He can find diamonds in the rough until they become too rough, and then they become corners and and DBs who can't tackle. But <laughs> I digress. I'm just saying there is so much layered into this that I'm beginning to think, Jay, and maybe I'm wrong. Last thing I'll say is I'm beginning to think maybe Justin Fields should not play next week. Oh, or They're going to roll him out there, but I'm going to mm -hmm. tell you what right now. Uh, Jackson to Watkins, uh, that play that happened that caused Detroit to lose this football game, mm -hmm. that 66-yarder, they're coming in hunting for bear, and I mean that figuratively, that they are coming in here to get this win. I think what we're getting ready to see right now is an epic meltdown of a proportion we have not seen in Chicago on our worst days with Jay Cutler, on our worst days with Twitchy Mitchy, on our worst days with sexy Rexy Grossman. It has never looked like this. And I'm going to tell you right now, I think, the Detroit Lions are going to come in here. And can I use one of your words? Can I use one of your most, words? Most definitely. And put the Foon Fox mm. on the Chicago Bears because mm. they played really well. Detroit played well. They are fighting up there. They, they He has that team ready to play. The Chicago Bears right now, I think the locker room is already gone. Mm. You are – this is one of the most historically bad offenses that have ever been created in the NFL. We saw that last week. What does anybody make you think, want to believe that this is going to be any better? It's only going to get worse. And if they roll Nick Foles out there, there might be there there we we might have more sacks than rushing attempts. Okay. Huh. 
Remember to look for our exclusive interview with Coach Angela Hamblin Blakely from the region. You know who only does it the way we do it, which is the sizzle, right here on Iron Skillet Radio and Iron Skillet Television. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Iron Skillet Sports. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to Iron Skillet Sports on YouTube at Iron Skillet Sports.